Let us now continue our analysis of the forward-backward method by using the two inequalities which we derived in the last video. And our goal will be to establish an inequality um, which has the telescoping property which we already saw in the, in the analysis of the subgradient method. And this telescoping property means that we have um, one expression on one side of the inequality and the same expression with n plus 1 instead of n, so with a shifted index on the other side of the equation. So this means that whenever we um, add up these inequalities or we apply the, uh, this as a chain of inequalities, all of these terms will go out, so we'll neutralize basically, except for the very first and the very last one. And in the subgradient method we already saw how this helped us to um, to get some useful properties and this will also be of use here. And since I prepare for these lectures I do already know a nice way um, to, to get such a telescoping inequality but if you want it's rather, I mean it's, it's not trivial but it's, it's easy to establish an, an inequality from these two for yourself. Um, if you want. Um, but I think if you try you might get something different from what I have. Um, but you can, um, yeah, since I know where, where I want to go I will uh, just use something which seems magic for now but uh, has some, some well-founded reasoning. Okay, so to, to start let's just take x and h arbitrary. And uh, we want to give a name to this uh, argument of the proximal point here. So we want um, to say, well, we have yn and we define yn just as xn minus gamma gradient of f and xn. Um, we will see why this is important because this yn is actually the telescoping term in our inequality, okay? Um, or this, it contains the yn, this telescoping term. And uh, whenever we assume that xn converges to some point x, which we hope we will uh, get at the end, then the gradient of f at xn by continuity of this gradient uh, will conver uh, converge to the gradient of f at x. Um, so it seems, or it is logical to also define uh, y as, um, so here of course n is non-negative, um, y as x, x, this x being this arbitrary point, minus gamma gradient of f at x. Okay, and we see that we also, we already have this in, in our inequalities here. For example, we see that xn minus gamma gradient f of xn, so yn appears here. And if we take a second look, then we also see that if we, if we sum up those two inequalities, well then we also have yn plus one here by, by means of minus xn plus one plus gradient of f of xn plus one um, appearing with the same, in the inner product with the same um, second factor. Okay, so what we, what we arrive at is if we add up these inequalities here, which we already have established, okay, then we get 1 over gamma yn, this is this term here, minus yn plus 1, which is this term here. Um, this term minus, or this term here, minus xn plus 1 plus a gradient of f at xn plus 1 is minus gamma 1 n plus 1, and you see that the factor here is the same. So if you add those two inequalities up, as we did, then you end up with minus yn plus 1 here, okay? And the inner product is with xn plus 1 minus x. Okay, 
minus 1 over 2L gradient of F xn plus 1 minus gradient of f at x. Okay, so this is just, I've just used uh, all these inequalities. Okay, so now we see that we have the difference between yn and yn plus 1. And now I give it away basically. So I, I say that, well, I want to uh, have a look at the basically um, y n minus y so these two points norm squared minus y n plus 1 minus y norm squared okay um, so this is just a new uh, thought so this is, well, yn minus yn plus 1 um, plus yn plus 1. So we just insert 0 here, minus y norm squared um, minus norm of yn plus 1 minus y squared. So this term. So this is y norm of yn minus yn plus 1 squared plus the, the mixed term here. So we, we apply the binomial formula. We, we take this term, this term, and the mixed term. And the mixed term is um, yn minus yn plus 1. And now you may see that this has something to do with what we did here. OK. And in the inner product with y n plus 1 minus y, okay? Right. And uh, the, the other quadratic term here, y n plus 1 minus y norm squared, is just subtracted. So I don't need to write it down again. Okay. That's good news. So now we can, um, we can try to, to get... Uh, the same term as we had here. Okay, so this is equal to still yn minus yn plus 1 norm squared plus 2 yn minus yn plus 1. Now we see, well, yn plus 1 is xn plus 1. Uh, so if we write xn plus 1 minus x, we, we m make a mistake here. We, we just forget about the gradients, but luckily we can just uh, correct ourselves by writing 2 and gamma. The, all the gradients have a factor gamma in front of them. And write the same first factor. And we have minus here and gradient of f at x n plus 1 minus gradient of f at x. Okay. Not norm squared, of course. It's uh, just a no product. Sorry for that. OK, so now we have basically split up this into these two factors. OK, and now we can use um, this here. So we, we already know uh, this factor here. This appears in, the, in this inequality. And so if we continue this, uh, this is on the right hand side, so this will be greater or equal than something. So just uh, we just uh, get our get our terms here. Two times, and now we have to multiply everything here uh, with two gamma. So this is greater or equal than here we have two gamma f of xn plus 1 plus g of xn plus 1 minus f of x minus g of x. This is this thing, minus f of x minus g of x. We brought it to the left-hand side, so that basically this will, will be the only term here. Okay. 
And we have to multiply this with 2 gamma here and bring it to the left hand side. So this will then give plus and gamma over L gradient f of x plus 1 minus gradient of f at x gradient f squared. So this is this term to the other side. Now we have uh, replaced this term with what we know from the inequality. Great. And what remains is just the second term here, or the, just the last term from what we had before. Um, so minus 2 gamma inner product of yn minus yn plus 1 with gradient of f at xn plus 1 minus gradient of f at x. Okay, so now we see that we have a quadratic term here, some quadratic term here, and just an inner product with contain, which contains as factors the things we already have in our quadratic terms. And uh, this makes uh, things a lot a lot easier. So now we have we have um, I think I might have forgotten. No, I did not. So so this will be our our telescoping term here, and we will see that these things are uh, uh, this uh, um, this term here, which we end up with, will be positive. First of all, we see that this. Uh, this difference of the function values is positive because, uh, or will be positive if we assume that x is a minimizer. So then um, f, f plus g evaluated at uh, an arbitrary point, for example xn plus 1, will be greater or equal than f of f plus g evaluated at the minimizer. And we also see that we can uh, combine this, these quadratic terms here to some new quadratic term Okay, by means of, um, for example, taking those two here and just write them as <coughs> some, um, some combined quadratic term. So uh, if we continue this inequality here, so okay, I, I, I can make this here uh, so that we see that continue here. So this will be just equal to, we take uh, norm of yn minus yn plus 1. This is this here. And we take something else into this quadratic term, namely basically a, a multiple of this second factor in the inner product, so that the mixed term between those two, uh, if we apply the binomial formula, will exactly be this inner product here. Okay, how do we do this? So we have minus here, so uh, what, we, what we take here will we'll, we'll have the minus sign. Then the factor will be 2 times whatever coefficient we write here. And we want to have minus 2 gamma, so we write minus gamma. And then gradient of f at x and plus 1. Yep, minus gradient of f at x. Okay, and um, this, if if you if you use the binomial formula, you get the first quadratic term, which is this one. As the mixed term, you will get minus two gamma inner product of this with this, which is exactly equal to this one. And we still have made a mistake. We have to subtract the quadratic term here, so we'll subtract minus gamma squared, and norm of uh, gradient of f at x n plus 1 minus gradient of f at x squared. All right, so now we have uh, taken these two terms and now we see, well, we have the same term as here, but with just uh, with, a, with a coefficient gamma, L, gamma over L. So instead of just subtracting gamma squared, um, this looks much better on a blackboard, of course. 
So for that, so we have gamma squared here, and we have, you know, we have we have subtracted gamma squared because we have co corrected the, the, uh, the this term here. Um, we have gamma, uh, so we have gamma over L and minus gamma squared. So gamma is a common factor, and so uh, we have uh, gamma over L minus gamma here as the other factor. And I could write like parentheses, normal parentheses. Yep. Okay. Okay. And this gives us this term here. So we have now handled this, this, and this term. And now we have uh, just two gamma f of x n plus 1 plus g of x n plus 1 minus f of x minus g of x. Okay. So we have basically arrived at our telescoping inequality. So the telescoping term is this one. It's just on the left-hand side of the inequality. And the right-hand side of the inequality um, is this thing here. Okay. So now, if x equals x bar, where x bar is a minimizer of f plus g, then well, then what we can use is our optimality criterion, which we has to have established for this setting. So then we know that, sorry, f at an arbitrary point plus g at the same point minus f of x bar minus g of x bar, which is our minimizer. And we can even subtract um, 1 over 2L times the difference of these gradients in the two points. Okay, can even subtract, subtract those and this will be greater or equal than 0. All right, so if we um, if we take this inequality, then we can even write something more in this in this bracket here, and this will still be something which is non-negative. Okay, so now again with y bar uh, defined as x bar minus gamma gradient of f at x bar, we get just this inequality, norm of y n minus y bar squared minus norm of y n plus 1 minus y bar squared, Oop, greater or equal than, and now we have this here. So, Um, you have this. If you, yeah, if you take a look at this, actually, if you take a, a, a kind of a closer look, then you get, well, we have y and we have, well, what is y n plus 1? y n plus 1 is x n plus 1, which we subtract. Then we have, we would have plus gamma gradient of f at x n plus 1, but we have this already here, so we can just forget about that. And um, we can just go on with gradient of f at x bar. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, so this is this term. And then um, let's continue with this term first. So this will be plus 2 gamma. And we actually want to 
insert more here. So we want to insert this one here. Now we have made a mistake. We have subtracted gamma over L times this thing here. So we have to compensate for that um, by adding this. And conveniently, we have like gamma over L here. So we have gamma times 2 over L instead of 1 over L minus gamma. Gradient F at x1 x x n plus 1 minus gradient of f x. All right. And as I said, um, we have that uh, the right hand side, this is a norm squared, this is non-negative. We have seen that this is non-negative um, because of our optimality criterion for x bar. We have also seen, we, we, we also see that this will be non-negative whenever gamma is less than 2 over L. Well, we have already seen this here. So this is the same condition as uh, we had for the falling function values. So if, um, so if gamma less or equal than 2 over L, then the right hand side is uh, non negative and this means that uh, y n norm of y n minus y bar is greater or equal than norm of y n plus 1 minus y bar squared for all n greater or equal than 0. So we see that uh, the, this sequence is monotone, so it's, it's, it's actually falling, the sequence is falling, so when you go to, from n to n plus 1, then the, this expression uh, gets smaller. So this is decreasing. And this holds for any um, minimizer x bar or y bar associated with this x bar of, so minimizer of f plus g. Okay. Great. This is decreasing. And uh, this is the first result for, for, for or the, the first result uh, when we exploit this inequality. And since the board is now full, I have to continue in the next video, where we also um, uh, take care of the rest of the terms um, as we did for the subgradient method.